It's all about neck bands. I've got a comprehensive video coming up that's going to make you an expert in Nick net bands. Stay tuned. Welcome to Sojourns. Let's journey into sewing. Hi everybody. Welcome back to the sewing room. This is Chris from Sojourns.com how to put on knit neck bands. So I recorded this video last year. It's in a little bit different format than I'm doing now, but it was so comprehensive and the information was so good that I take you through from start to finish, including top stitching on knit neck bands. I have inserted a few more pictures and a few more directions. Some of the things were a little off camera, but I've inserted good pictures for you. And you're gonna be an expert by the end. So let's get going. Remember to like, share, and especially subscribe to Sojourns right down here so that you'll get a notification with our next tutorial. Free to leave some suggestions in the comments for things you'd like to see me cover next. All of the information on the t-shirts that I'm working on in the video will be in the description box. Those are my affiliate links. Thank you so much for supporting me. In the video, I do say it's in the comments, but it's actually in the description box. Here we go. Neck bands from start to finish. I get a lot of requests to show how to put on knit neck bands on t-shirts or dresses. And a lot of people have trouble with it. And I'm actually pretty comfortable with neck bands. As with most things, practice makes nearly perfect. Um, but I hope that we can show you a way to have your neck bands look professional and make you feel really confident about what you're wearing. Uh, what I'm wearing today is a five out of four pattern called the Jessie pattern. And I'm showing you this today because when I made this, I used a contrasting fabric for my neckband because I thought it brought a little bit of flavor to this otherwise black t-shirt. I also, and I'll come in really close, I also used our reverse cover stitch for the top stitching. I won't be showing you that today. I'm going to show you how to put on a regular neckband and then I'm going to top stitch it not using the reverse cover stitch, using the regular needle cover stitch, the front of it. So let's get started. I have everything all set. The pattern, I will link to this pattern in the comments because it's a great pattern. I will also show you the back of it. It has three really unique backs and it was really fun to do. And I think that you'll really like it. This is the scoop front with a racer back. What I'm going to be showing you today, and I've already made the shirt, this is the Classic Tee by Love Notions. A fantastic, wonderful t-shirt. Take you anywhere. So I have made the scoop neck version of this tee and we're going to put on the neck band. There is a pattern piece in the pattern. I've put it together with the pattern piece, cut it out and sew the two short ends together. I do serge my short ends of the neckline together, the neck band together but I wanna show you something that I do that makes it not bulky. Serger stitches can be very bulky. So here I've serged it together. I'm gonna to bring this in and I'm going to show you what I did. I used a four thread overlock, which means there's two rows of serger stitches besides the upper and lower looper. So if you were to sew this using your regular sewing machine, you'd have one line of stitch whether it's a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch, a little lightning bolt stitch, but you'd have one line of stitching from one needle. So I take this neckband and at the center point, I snip through the loopers and I snip through the right needle, the first line of needle threads, leaving the left needle, the second line of needle threads intact. That way I can take my serger stitches, press one to one side and one to the other. When I fold it in half, lining them up, I get a very smooth, non-bulky serger stitch seam, as if I had done it on a sewing machine, but if I can do everything on my serger, I will. So now I'm going to mark the quarter points of my neckline, neckband so that we can fit it onto the neckline. So I hold it at that center back. This line will be your center back. Bring it down to here. And with a pin, I always use pins on my neck bands. I will use clips on the bodice. I pin the halfway mark. 
Then bringing those together, I'm doing that down here, I'm sorry. Bringing those together, those two pins, the back and the pin, I find the next quarter point and of course the next quarter point. So now your neckband is marked. Let's put that aside. Come back to the bodice. I use clips on my bodice. I don't use clips on the bodice and the neckband because it gets too bulky and it's I'm too many thumbs when it comes to putting them on. You want to find the center front and the center back of your bodices. And sometimes they're marked on the pattern, sometimes they are not. But to do that, you're going to bring your shoulder seams together right here, shoulder seams together. And then if you line up the raw edges, you will come to your center front. I mark that with my regular clip. Most of my clips are red. I have a few that are a different color and I'll show you why. Mark the center point. Still holding that together at the shoulder seams, you're going to line up the back raw edges and you come to the center back. I use a different color, I have pink and orange. I use a different color to mark the center back of my shirts because it happens to all of us at least once, you'll put the neck band on backwards where the seam is in the front and that's really disheartening. But if I use a different color clip, it kind of gives me a mental visual flag of, yep, I'm doing it right. Now we need to find the quarter points on the sides. At first glance, if you're new to sewing, you may think that will be the shoulder points. And I understand where you might think that. But if we think a little bit deeper, we'll realize that the front of the neckline is 98% of the time going to be lower than the back, or at least different than the back. You can have a high neckline in the front and lower in the back, but a lot of times it's the reverse. So your shoulder points will not be the quarter point. It will be forward of the shoulder point if you have a lower front. To find that, you're going to put together that center front and center back marks that you made, those clips. So I'm going to put those together and line up the raw edges. When you do that, and I have this already done for you, that's where you'll mark your quarter point and you see that it's forward of the shoulder. And you'll do the same here, line up front and center back and center front, bring the raw edges together and mark your quarter point. So now you have your quarter points marked on your bodice, your quarter points marked on your band, and now we just need to put those together. I work from the right side of the garment. So I'll be putting on my band that way so I'm going to take the back of the band where that seam is and I'm going to put that with my orange clip, which, donate, which denotes my back band. I think I need a little bit of light here. Let's see if that'll work for you. I'll come over here. Using that clip, I'm gonna clip those together, raw edges together. And then I want to find the center front. So I have my center front marked by my pin and my center front marked by my clip. I'm going to put those raw edges together and mark my clip. Take my clip off of my bodice and put it together with the band. Easier to do when you're not doing it on camera. Okay, and now we come to the quarter points on the sides. We have that marked with our pin and our clip and we're gonna do the same thing. Raw edges together. Take the clip off and just replace it. Mark the next one the same way. Make sure your raw edges are together. Now I'm gonna take a look. So we've got the band pinned to the shirt, right sides together. Now if you just take a look real quick, you'll see that the bodice is bigger than the band. And that's exactly what you want. Now, can you see that? That it hangs down a little bit because you're going to stretch the band to fit the bodice so that it lays beautifully, nice and flat. That's very important. We're stretching the band and not the shirt. So come on to the serger and I'll show you how I do that. I start at the back, the center back, where you have the seam and your orange clip. I like to sew with the band up so that I can stretch it. And I sew directly under the needles. I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. My needles are up, my foot is up. I'm going to slide the center back seam just under the needles. And I'm going to sink my needle right there. And now I'm sewing with a four thread overlock and a quarter inch seam will bring me just before the knife. I'm gonna start serging a couple of stitches without stretching the band just to anchor those in. 
And now with the needles sunk, I'm going to begin to stretch the band to the next quarter point and surge as I go. So I have it pressed already and I'm gonna stretch that a little bit and surge. Sink the needle so I can reconfigure. And I've got a little bit more to go. So I'm going to stretch the band, not the bodice and surge. And one last time, pulling that to my seam to the back. Surge all the way to the next pin. Sink my needles. I'm gonna take out my pin and my clip. coming back around to where we began, bringing those threads here so they can get cut off. I'm going to go over that beginning at the back neck band. We're gonna let the serger cut this off, make sure I'm to the left of the knife. Just gonna go over right to that neck band, sink the needles, turn this, raising the foot, put it back down and serge off. And I'm gonna cut this off. Okay, so you can deal with those threads a couple of ways. You can take your, long, your big eyed needle and you can put that through the threads. Or since we've gone over it, you can just cut those, put a little fray check on there. I would use matching thread. I much prefer matching thread, but the contrast is much better for you to see on the video. I'm going to clip that here so it's not distracting. I'll either put some fray check on that since I didn't tug it back through. Now I'm going to go over to my iron and I'm going to give that a good press. I'm going to press on the side where I sewed it. That will shrink the stitches to get it to have a good fit. And then I'll come back and show you how to top stitch. Now we're going to cover stitch down the seam allowance to top stitch our classic tee. So I've pressed it down with the seam allowance towards the body of the shirt. And I'm starting at the center back seam. We are going to be using the narrow right cover stitch. So that's two needles here. And the needles are indicated on the foot. So we want these needles to go right into the seam, which will be just under the band here. So I'm going to line up the band so that when I sew, it's going to be just to the right of that needle marker so that I have it exactly where I want it. A little hard to do it uh, in this position, but I want you to get a good look. So here we go, I've sunk the needles. I have my presser foot down and I'm going to use this as my guide to take it just to the right of that second needle, making sure that the seam is to the left. We're going to cover stitch in the round. When I get to the seam, which might be a little bit bulky, if I feel like I need to, I can use the hand wheel for that. Let's see how this does. I think I'm good. That worked fine. Constantly refiguring this so it's flat and smooth and even, but I'm not stretching it. I am using matching thread here because it is top stitching and I want that look for this shirt. You can certainly top stitch with contrasting thread, but for this particular simple tee, I wanted it to match.
gonna come all the way back to where I started. And when I see those threads, I'm going to stop for a minute. And here I see those threads. That's my beginning needle threads. I want to cut those off. Those are locked in. Cut those right off. And also the chain stitch thread. Cut that right off. Okay. I'm going to go over this about an inch, half an inch, following the same lines, which is great to have the clear foot so I can see exactly where I was. Lining up my stitches with the two indicators on the foot. Then I'm going to lift my needles to the highest position, raise my foot, and release my cover stitch in the round. Here I have top stitched my neckband. Top stitch, beautiful, right under the band. I hope this was helpful. Please leave any questions. Please like if you liked this, share, subscribe. It'll help other people see it. And please let me know what tutorial you want to see next. Thank you so much. Bye.